All right. Good morning, Keller Williams, Greater Metropolitan, and welcome to this week's sales meeting. It's been a couple weeks since we've rallied the troops on a Tuesday morning because last week we were having a big old time uh, at Mayfield Country Club for Summer Masterminds. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Let's dive right in to this week's uh, conversation about our belief system. So you are just joining us for the first time, or it's been a while since you've been on the call, um, please uh, uh, know that every week we're going to touch on one of these different uh, different items from the from the belief system for Keller Williams. Uh, and this week, I want to talk about uh, talk about creativity. Uh, we are talking about remargining our business today uh, in the face of a shift, in the face of economic change. And so, uh, you know, some people say, hey, creative financing, that sounds like something that's going to get me in jail. Uh, and if you do it the wrong way, you will. But what I'm going to ask you to do is to, uh, as we have our conversation about remarging our business, looking for ways uh, to uh, make the most of what we have and protect our profit, uh, we're going to look for some ways to be creative. We're going to talk about some things that, um, that would make for... Uh, you know, for some unique outcomes that uh, protect our bottom line, protect our profit, and allow us to continue to live that, uh, that life that we want. Congratulations to all of our cappers from the month of June. We had some heavy hitters take care of their cap uh, in the month of June, and uh, congratulations to uh, our top dog, Jake Lozier, capping inside of one month, and Dan Malloy, uh, I think was at uh, 32 days this year. Dan Malloy disappointed uh, at that outcome since I think he did it in like 27 last year. Uh, and then uh, you've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of great performance from, uh, from a lot of our team agents. Uh, some first-time cappers uh, in Jill and Nick, uh, and really excited. Uh, for everybody that is now earning 100% of their commission as we hit the hot part of the market uh, and look at the back half of the year. So congratulations to everyone who has hit their cap so far this year and last month. As I said, uh, our summer mastermind event in, at Mayfield Country Club last Wednesday was a huge success, uh, right around 150 people in, uh, in the room live and in person, enjoying some networking, hanging with our vendors, getting to better know our, uh, our panelists, our keynotes. Uh, please, a uh, big thank you to everyone who, who made it out. Uh, you, know, you being there makes the event uh, a, a stronger and stronger event. The panelists uh, who shared uh, with reckless abandon uh, of all of their tips and tricks and strategies. Uh, the moderators who took themselves out of panels so that they could uh, help uh, Proctor, and then uh, all of our sponsors. We can't pull events off like this without partnership from, uh, from our sponsors, uh, Cross Country Mortgage, America's Preferred Home Warranty, Greater Metropolitan Title, Greater Metropolitan Management, uh, your CLETC, Divi Homes. Uh, I think that I, I think I got everybody. Carrie, let me know if I missed any of our sponsors. But big thank you to everyone. It's an awesome event. Uh, we are thrilled. Uh, we are thrilled to have everybody uh, be a part of it, and we're lo already looking forward to next year. Uh, and then thank you to everybody who uh, put someone in the room for career night last night. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, a wonderful time. We took our show on the road, as you probably saw in the email, and so we set up shop at uh, Shaker Heights Library. Next week, we're going to be at the Rocky River Library. Uh, we're trying out some, uh, some different venues to make it uh, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more accommodating, a little bit more attractive to the man on the street, or the woman on the street, for that matter. Um, so we had a lot of fun. Uh, great venue, great conversation, <clears throat> but thank you to Wendy social team and Jill uh, for helping uh, people find their way into conversation with Keller Williams Greater Metropolitan and helping people consider the opportunities that exist through a career in real estate. Um, I absolutely love the conversation. I love the excitement. I love the opportunity for 
not only everybody in our company, but everybody who is going to be in our company. So next week, don't miss it, 6.30 p.m., Rocky River Public Library. Anybody that you know that they don't have to be in classes, they don't have to uh, be committed, but they, it's a great opportunity for them to learn more. As I said, we start a conversation with why real estate, what's going on in the industry, what matters most to you uh, as somebody uh, on the outside looking in, and then what's the process like to get licensed, and then what's Keller Williams like? And so we hammer all those, uh, all those items and, and more. Um, there are, uh, boy, there we laugh, we cry, we, you know, we, we hit the whole range of emotions uh, for the evening. So please don't, uh, don't be shy, show up yourself as well. And then uh, congratulations to all the agents who uh, uh, made the decision to sign on with Keller Williams at Greater Metropolitan last month. Uh, you're looking at people who have moved their active businesses, who have launched their career, uh, or taken advantage of the opportunity to, to, uh, to otherwise be in relationship with our company. So if you see any of these folks, if you bump into them uh, in a deal or an, on an opportunity, please, by all means, uh, you know, give them some love, help them through, and we will be thrilled to, uh, to be in business with them and see their careers take off. All right, so for our top agents, groups, and teams for the month, uh, June, as you uh, have heard, and for those of you who are participating in Profit Share, as you will see next month, um, Profit uh, uh, June was a monster, or next in the next couple of days, June was a monster month. Um, so just want to give a, a few quick shout outs here um, to, uh, to some standouts. Rudy Jones, individual agent, six listings in the month of June. Lori Dag, five listings in the month of June. Um, monster, monster performance there. Uh, Eric Akbar, uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, Eric Akbar, 13 units uh, closed in the month of June. Uh, if I do my quick tally of business days, that's like two every three days in the month of June, uh, and uh, congrats to Jade Zivko with seven closings in the month of June. Um, next for our teams, uh, shout out to the uh, ARCO team uh, who uh, took six listings and sold six units. That's a good way to keep the pipeline rocking and rolling. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Ina Maravin and, and uh, Cassie Nelson there on the Distinct Home Group are uh, crushing it. 15 listings, 15 listings in the month of June uh, for the Distinct Home Group and 12 closings. So just absolutely, uh, absolutely incredible performance there. And then, on the group front, uh, on the group front, you have uh, Satrina Young and the Satrina Young Real Estate Group, uh, newly minted inside of this year with 10 listings in the month of June. So congratulations, Satrina. And then the list, sell, and buy team, 25 closings in the month of June. That is nearly one a day, not just business days. So monster performance uh, all around. Uh, groups, teams, and individual agents. We are rocking at all levels of the organization. So be on the lookout uh, for some love and Facebook group to all these folks and also our, um, you know, some individual uh, praise going out as well. But big month, know a lot of folks uh, off to the races here in July as well. So um, we are... Uh, we are uh, in a very unique opportunity uh, as a company, as one of our, uh, one of our agents, uh, one of our faithful and dedicated agents has uh, some strong relationships uh, with some folks uh, that have ties to uh, and frequent the Ukraine. Uh, and so we have the opportunity to uh, help support um, uh, some of the citizens and civilians in Ukraine, uh, and so, and this is also something as you, as I teased out in my note this morning, um, it's gonna be an opportunity for us to leverage, not only as an organization that gives back, that cares, that supports those in need, uh, but also in a way that allows us uh, to ask our clients and our customers to do the same. Uh, so I can't see, uh, 
Monica, do we have our, uh, our, our crew uh, on this morning? I see you, um, but I don't see, I'm not sure, if, I'm not sure where everybody else is. Uh, there's Peter. Uh, and yes, so Jim. what I'm going to do, uh, uh, Peter, would you like me to play the video first or would you like to introduce yourself? Then we'll play the video, then we'll talk. Yes, I would like to introduce myself for a little bit um, and you could play the video and after I will tell a little bit more about the uh, situation in Ukraine. So um, my name is Peter. Um, I was born in Ukraine. I was grew up um, in Ukraine and uh, moved to United States 18 years ago. Uh, but um, right now I have connections. I have so many family members, so many friends in Ukraine. And uh, I see how the difficult time right now our country uh, stays. So we would like to share with you a little bit of that. See if I can do this right. Хочемо подякувати міжнародній гуманітарній Апрівне за сприяння Рівницької міської ради за безкоштовну допомогу для нашої донечки. Наша дянка народилася з спину мозкової грижою і трицепілією. В неї є порушення тазових органів і немає опори на ніжки. Тому ваша допомога є великою підтримкою для нашої сім'ї. Від всього серця вам дякуємо. All right, Peter, thank you so much uh, for uh, providing that video. Um, some, some really sobering uh, images in there, but also a great example of what you and your organization do. Um, I, you know, I wanna, I wanna turn it over uh, to you now to talk a little bit about, about what's actually going on over there and, and why this conversation that we're having now is so important in the context of you know, where the world is with the conversation about Ukraine. 
Yeah, first I would like to thank you guys uh, for um, your time, for um, opportunity, for what you've given to us to share with you um, what's going on and uh, uh, how difficult time is in Ukraine right now. We also are very thankful for all you, uh, American nation because uh, the support what we are receiving from American nation is making a very huge difference. Um, and we are extremely uh, grateful for that. So as you know, um, our country um, it has a very difficult time because of the war. Um, so as of now, more than 10 million people left their homes and flee out of homes from uh, their uh, region where they live um, to find refuge. Most of them, have moved out of country. Most of them, they didn't have ability to move out of country. They stay on the Western part of Ukraine. Um, tens, thousands people, including kids were killed. Uh, so many wounded, so many, so many lost their uh, relatives. Um, so many people are injured and need uh, medical supplies. Um, so many people have lost their loved ones. Thousands of buildings and homes are destroyed. Um, all hope is lost in the war zone. These people don't have anywhere to go. They don't even have basic needs like uh, food, water, and first aid. Uh, and it's not just the civil people. It's also army people. Um, they don't have enough supplies. They don't have basic first aid kits or tourniquets to stop bleeding. Um, Ukrainian government doesn't have the much ability to help these people because their supplies uh, stretch very thin while they're trying to uh, fight the war. So uh, a lot of volunteers step up and um, on the west part of Ukraine, where is uh, not uh, you know not not much going on with the war, uh, they build uh, temporary warehouses uh, so big uh, semi truck can bring the uh, aid to those warehouses, and from there volunteers organized uh, small trucks because big semi trucks they cannot go to the war zone because they are. Uh, big target for you know to be destroyed mm -hmm. so the small trucks small cars they taken from those warehouses supplies and deliver into the uh, war zone and uh, trying to distribute directly to the people who is uh, in a great need um, I myself had the opportunity to go to Ukraine a few months ago and I see how that process uh, is going on and um, how those people is faithful. Uh, they are, yes, and a lot of them were killed doing that. Um, when they are delivering help to people, they were killed. Um, I personally met two families. Um, one of them has uh, six kids, another family has seven kids, and their father were killed um, while he was delivering supplies to the, uh, to the war zone. And it's uh, very sad or very hard to see um, what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, so, um, like I said, government, they, they're trying to help people, but they cannot, they don't have much ability. Uh, so a lot of help come from different countries through volunteers. And uh, so during that crisis, uh, our church has been um, raising support and funds. Um, uh, we were able to uh, raise funds to send directly um, money to the people who in the needs, um, to churches who support those peoples. Uh, also, we were able to send, as of now, uh, seven containers with the uh, supplies, uh, with the medical and uh, um, humanitarian aids. Um, and few of our team members, uh, 
went to Ukraine and even today one or group one group of people um, living today to go to Ukraine. So um, this is just a short uh, update, but um, the overall the situation is very sad. Yeah. Uh, so many people they are they are in big need. Uh, they they don't have um, just just simple things. Um, first aid kit they don't have it and a lot of people died because they couldn't stop the bleeding um, you know they didn't have tourniquets um, so we are, that's why we are so thankful for um, for you guys that you would like to uh, organize that event and um, help out the Ukraine it's it's it's, it's yeah. big for so, us so yeah Peter I'll, I'll talk a little bit about about what we're what we're doing um, and, you know, big shout out to, to Monica Woodman. Monica uh, is an agent in our Rocky River office. She's in MAPS Mastery Coaching. She's an outstanding agent that's been with our company for probably five or six years now. Uh, and Monica uh, brought this opportunity to our leadership team and said, hey, um, this is something, and she just said, hey, this is something I'm going to do. Uh, and, you know, I'd like to do it at the Rocky River office uh, as an opportunity uh, to let other agents be involved. Um, and so, you know, it's, uh, it's hard not to recognize um, the gravity of the situation uh, when you, you hear Peter describe it. And, you know, I'm a, I'm, we're all victims to the news cycle, right? And in uh, January and February, it was all you could hear, uh, or March, uh, March, April, all you could hear was about Ukraine. Uh, and there was a lot of attention on it. Um, and then, you know, um, you know, all of the all of the media giants moved on to the other issues of the day, uh, but you know the folks, uh, the folks in the Ukraine are still being heavily impacted. And so we thought this was an opportunity to do the right thing uh, and to support a great cause uh, and an authentic one in the sense that we are, you know, we're not asking for people to give blindly to money uh, of money to an organization that they can't see, hear, feel, and touch. So. Um, we, you know, the, the thing that's most important is the supplies. Um, and so on July 27th and 28th, right? So that is uh, next Wednesday and Thursday. There's going to be a, a drop-off set up in the Rocky River uh, office parking lot. So it's going to be on the Linden Road side of the building um, from 4 to 7 p.m., uh, and you, your clients, anybody you want in your life can come by and drop off supplies um, that are going to make it onto shipping containers, are going to get on a boat with Peter, and are going to go to Ukraine uh, to make sure that they find their end user. Um, you know, it's, it's a really powerful thing that Peter and his team do. They actually go with the supplies. Um, you know, if you know anything about war-torn countries, you know that uh, the, op uh, the opportunity for, uh, for goodwill to be exploited and, and for the, you know, the, the, the gifts from, uh, from uh, good Samaritans to fall into the wrong hands, quite honestly, um, you know, can make those efforts futile. But Peter, is, uh, Peter and his team are committed to making sure that these find the right home. So what we're going to do uh, we're going to be sending out uh, uh, this list and all the information following the meeting. And the other thing that I, I, I will encourage you to take advantage of is that there's an opportunity for you to brand this to yourself, right? So if you want this to be, you know, uh, uh, a client event for yourself, if you want to push this in, if you're looking for a touch with your database or a reason to see them in person, you can uh, push this out with your, uh, under your brand and your marketing. We're going to have a brandable option so that you can leverage this and get more people involved. We would love uh, to create a, a good problem for Peter and his team by getting too much stuff uh, that day and needing to scramble to find another truck, uh, you know, or another shipping container. So uh, please uh, take, it, take advantage of this opportunity, not only to give back to those who are in uh, less fortunate situations, but also um, to, uh, to touch your clients and to get, uh, get into deeper relationship with them. So, um, uh, Peter, I truly appreciate you being here this morning and sharing, sharing that story and your mission. Um, a big, big thank, thank you, you so to Mark Woodman uh, for bringing us into relationship with Peter and his group. And guys, July 7th and 28th, drop some stuff off, come meet some of the people from Ukraine, meet Peter and his team, 
um, and and we'll we will make the most of uh, of this opportunity to to, to care for uh, for our fellow uh, men and women across the pond. All right. Thank you so Michael, much. Can I just say one a couple things? Yeah, go for it, Monica. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you, and I I really do appreciate everybody that participates in this event. Um, and thank you so much to the leadership uh, team. I, I couldn't be more overwhelmed with their um, participation and help with this. Um, but I, I did want to share. You know, if if you want to get this flyer to, uh, if you're a parishioner of a parish and you want to get this flyer to them, um, oftentimes they can send it out to um, via email um, to their parishioners, and that might be a, a good way to hit a lot of places. Um, and then there's the link that's in the flyer is live electronically and it it's enables people to order from Amazon directly uh, supplies that they so desperately need and then take that to the truck. Um, and then also cash donations. Um, if those of you in Pepper Pipe or the East Side are not making it over the West Side, cash donations are welcome to help with the logistics and shipping. So I just wanted to share that piece. Thank you. Awesome. No, thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a, a great opportunity for, for us to make an impact. And again, Monica, thank you for bringing it to us. Thank you, Peter, for being here. Uh, guys, more information coming out on this. Take advantage of it. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week in River. Thank you so much. All right, guys. We'll do a quick rundown of everything we got coming up on the calendar. Uh, quick shout out. The Profit Share Mastermind for Thursday was meant to be in person. Uh, that is now going to be moved via Zoom. Uh, so more details on that in a second. Remember every Wednesday morning to, uh, you know, have, have your phone handy. Not that everyone doesn't always have it in their hand, uh, but we're going to have a different agent uh, or member of our company go live uh, and do a quick 10-minute training just to drop some resources in midweek, give you a little bump, give you something to talk to your clients about or a new strategy to try uh, as you work through the back half of the week. This Friday, guys, very excited uh, to bring an opportunity to all of us. KW launched a strategic partnership uh, around February or announced it, and it has been coming together. And, and it's a partnership with a, a nationwide company um, that is a health insurance provider. And so one of the big challenges to being a real estate agent is your 1099 and access to certain uh, exchanges and certain health care plans is not necessarily ready available, readily available, uh, and if it is, it's not very affordable. And so what we're really happy to do is, uh, is bring the opportunity uh, to all of our agents uh, in the company and in Keller Williams world uh, across the nation. So Friday, we're gonna have um, one of the representatives from that health insurance provider on our Money Matter Masters mind to talk about health insurance for real estate agents, to talk about this partnership with Keller Williams and to talk about the opportunity for people to uh, lock in and plug in on that. So if you, uh, if you have, uh, have ever said like, oh my gosh, like I'm just keeping this dual career thing going because I got my health insurance over here and I wish I could do real estate full time or if you're operating in a more precarious situation or you don't like the health insurance that you've been able to secure for yourself as a 1099, be here. Be here. This is a tremendous opportunity, and it is one of the things that we are committed to doing as an organization locally, nationally, and internationally is helping our agents, uh, you know, have those lives worth living, and, and that means, you know, healthier. That means protected, uh, and so we're committed to this opportunity. Uh, Thursday, 3 o'clock via Zoom on the 21st. Uh, the uh, Profit Share Mastermind uh, will be on Zoom. So please, everybody join us. Profit Share checks will hit your accounts on the 21st with just under $160,000 shared in profit uh, going out uh, to our agents this Thursday. And we're going to talk about exactly how that works. How does Profit Share work? How do you get involved in it? Um, and uh, and, and what's, uh, you know, what's everything behind the curtain on Profit Share? So very excited. I uh, love this conversation. 
I love explaining it. I love making it simple. And it's going to be a great setup to a great event that we have coming in October uh, where the, the godfather of profit share, Aaron Kaufman, is going to be in to talk all about his, uh, uh, his journey in profit share and why he is so passionate about it. And then on uh, Thursday of next week, uh, you uh, can grab a, a one hour of elective CE. Guys, we have emails going out every day about people who need their 30 hours and they need to get them done now. So we're committed to bringing something every single month to you uh, as a uh, opportunity for CE. So Rocky River office, 11 a.m., third floor training room, uh, pest information and the real estate professional. So as inspections and all those wonderful things become more commonplace in a shifting market, your opportunity to have uh, 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 all the knowledge you need to advise your buyers on the right stuff is right here, plus an hour of CE. And then finally, Friday the 29th, uh, one, of, uh, one of my most favorite events of the year is, uh, is our summer cookout this year, Hawaiian themed. It is a Hawaiian themed cookout. We are uh, very excited. Uh, we're going to be at Edgewater Park again. I'm going to be on the grill. Who knows? I might be in a white shirt. I might be in a Hawaiian shirt. We don't know. Uh, but we're thrilled to, uh, to have this event again. It's very fun. It's very casual. There's, I promise there's no training or education element at all. So don't you can turn your brain off Friday at five and uh, come out, have a burger, have a dog, bring the friends, bring the family, bring the kiddos, bring the pups, uh, and just enjoy uh, some nice Northeast Ohio uh, late summer weather. And then Mega Camp. Guys, you're going to start hearing more and more about this. The clock is ticking. Mega Camp is on the 23rd and 24th of August in person and digital. Uh, it is in person for the first time since 2019, right? So the first time in a few years, it is 100% agent focused content strategies for thinking and, and thriving in any market, especially the one we're going into. Uh, it is one of the most tremendous Keller Williams networking opportunities as it is the best and the brightest from around the world. And as you network, you can access referral partners around the world. Uh, and it is one of the many, many examples of uh, how our leader, um, our leader and uh, chairman, CEO, and about a half a dozen other titles, probably Gary Keller, invests in our agent. So it is all Gary all day long. Sorry, guys, I'm getting my slideshow refigured here. Didn't realize I was Showing you the wrong screen. All right, quick partner updates here. Sorry, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're running just a, a few minutes behind this morning. We're gonna throw it over to Chris, Sean, and Don, the uh, three uh, mortgageteers, and see what they have to tell us about uh, what is a very exciting and thrilling mortgage market we are living through. I will try and keep it short for you. So uh, main thing, two, two quick things. Um, Fed meeting is next week. Uh, headlines are likely going to say uh, Fed bumps rate 0 0.75, uh, 75 basis points. Um, market was kind of rooting for and almost pulling for 100 basis points, but um, three quarters. So we don't necessarily think interest rates are going to jump three quarters next week. Just to be clear, um, when the Fed bumps the interest rate, that doesn't mean mortgage rates go up. In fact, sometimes there's even some improvement. So we'll have more detail on that next week. And then um, FHA um, kind of softened up a guideline. Just a quick example, you got somebody who's uh, maybe a bartender or server um, with that line of work, typically we're averaging income over a two year period. Well, obviously they may not have worked in 2020 due to COVID and FHA was real strict on having to average that income, um, which really penalized somebody with a, a commission or variable style income. Uh, they've allowed us to apply some common sense that says, okay, well, we'll look at the average since COVID and we'll look at the average before COVID. So. Um, if you've got anybody in the server industry or any kind of a variable income sales, um, where 2020 especially hit them hard, or even 2021, uh, we're able to give them a second look and, and, and again, apply a little bit more common sense. So um, that's what I got. Don and Chris? Just a reminder that uh, the veteran can now pay for the home, or excuse me, not the home inspection, but the pest inspection on VA deals. So just keep that in mind. It does not have to be charged to the seller. I'm good. 
All good. All right. Good. Uh, good reminders there. Good forecast, guys. If you got buyers in the pipeline and they're motivated, and you can start talking to them about what the Fed's doing, potential impacts on interest rates, what the future looks like on that end, you are positioning yourself as a local economist of choice. If you can't do it, just put them in touch with Sean, Don, or Chris, and they'll do it. And you get to uh, you get to use a little bit of leverage. And then Don, great call out around the VA loans, guys. More and more and more. We're hearing about FHA and VA being in play uh, in this shifting market. So if you've got clients that you were frustrated with, were frustrated with the market six months ago, 12 months ago, and they were living in the uh, VHA, FHA world, that's back. So take advantage of it. Get them plugged in with Sean, Don, or Chris. All right. Over to the friends at GM Title and s <laughs> We have, uh, I believe we have, who do we have on the line? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys all know that a month from today, we are planning on doing another core CE. This time it will be on ethics and it will be in person. So we are going to do it at the Barrington Golf Club. We'll provide lunch, snacks, desserts, all of that. And we um so make sure to look out for the registry for that. And hopefully we will see all of you there. Thank you so mm. much. All right, and I know that uh, Gina is not with us today, and I don't think I saw Jess on the. Oh, there she is. I'm here. Would you, <laughs> you sneak in after the bell? <laughs> no, I've been here the whole time, Mike. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. Good morning. Um, it was really great to see a lot of you guys last week in person, um, and I had a great time at the mastermind. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions about property management, if you have any clients who are looking for a place to rent, or if you have clients who are buying a property that they're looking for a professional management company, please uh, give me a call, pass them over to me, and I'm happy to help your clients and, and answer any questions that you guys have. That's awesome, guys. A, a huge opportunity when we we talk about mofers and we talk about uh, helping people with their real estate related needs as they own, not just when they want to buy and sell. Uh, getting into deeper relationship with your investors is really important. And having a great management company that you trust is a big value in that. One great thing about it being our management company and candidly it being Jess at the helm is that um, whenever your, uh, your clients go in, they get tagged as you. And whenever, if those people ever raise their hand or tell the guy fixing the sink that they want to sell, it lands back with you. Uh, that's our commitment. And that's the reason why we want to have our agents uh, uh, protected and, and supported with a great management company. So thank you so much, Jess. And thank you uh, to all of our partners, as always. And a big thank you again for your support of Summer Masterminds last week. All right. Let's talk remargining our business uh, through expense management. Um, if you've been a part of or seen some of the Money Matter Masterminds, if you've been a part of a business planning clinic, you know that I can get pretty jazzed up when it comes to finances. You know, that's why they call me Money Mike. Uh, they don't actually call me that. No one does. But if anyone wanted to, you'd be welcome to start. Uh, uh, but this is a really important, a really, really important thing. Uh, and I just want to set the stage before we uh, before we get into get into stuff here. And, and that's really that, you know, we talk we're talking about a shifting market. Uh, and, you know, the last shift was 2008, 9, 10. Right. And that was that was not a market shift. That was a market free fall. It was a market collapse. There's a lot of, you know, that was big. We, nobody is predicting it to the same degree, a shift like that. What we're shifting in, what we will shift into initially is a market more similar to what we saw five years ago with less expectation on appreciation in the, in the following years. So some folks might say, well, if that's the, if that's the way, uh, if that's what we're shifting to, you know, why is that such a big deal? And the reason it's such a big deal is that we, uh, uh, you know, there's a, there's a phrase that says the stretched mind, right? Your mind is like a rubber band. If you stretch it, it never uh, returns to its original shape or, you know, uh, Mark Twain probably said it better than I just did. But the, the point is when things change, they change. Uh, and what's happened in the last 36 months is that for people in the real estate industry, 
their income has gone up almost 50% without selling another house, right? 30, 30% in most cases. And so a stretched budget, right? Uh, never returns back to normal either, unless we're really intentional about it. And so the opportunity that we have in the run-up to this shift and the manifestation of economic recessions and changes in the, in the housing market and interest rates, you know, it's always important, right? If we are going to be accountable and stay in reality, we are going to control what we can control. And uh, if you feel like the market is impacting what you make, then control harder what you spend or control, control more of how you spend your time. So here's the main ideas uh, that we're going to cover in the next 15 minutes. We're going to do a little perspective on uh, expense management. We're going to talk about understanding the market, understanding your business, cutting that fat, uh, uh, and then making the most of what you have, getting to the bottom line, making an action plan, because we want to get practical and tactical. This, is the, the, this, this segment is not going to be philosophical around expense management. I can wax poetic about uh, finances and uh, lifestyle and all these other wonderful things. We're going to talk about what you can do in the next 12 days before we get to August 1st to make sure that the, that the last five months of the year, uh, you are in com complete control of what happens, when it happens, how it happens, and why it is happening. Okay. So first, uh, expense management, right? All the money that you make is revenue. All the money you suspend are your expenses. Everything left over is profit. The ratio of that profit to the revenue is your margin, right? So I, I, you know, if you've been in the industry long enough, uh, or you might look across, uh, look across the, uh, uh, the open house and see an agent who does $10 million a year, uh, that's going to be, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in gross commission incomes. Uh, but you also know that like, you know, they are, uh, they're, they're, they're living month to month. It's because their profit margin is very low, right? Of all the money that they make, they're spending nearly as much. And so the percentage of money they actually get to keep to fund their life or invest in their future is low. And if and when the market shifts, so many of our expenses are fixed, which means we've got mortgage payments, we've got uh, car payments, we've got staff, we've got office space, we've got all of these things that are due every month, right? If you don't sell a house, bills are still due. Right, you get sick and can't work for a couple of weeks. Bills are still due. The market shifts, and you weren't ready for it. You weren't protected against it. Bills are still due, and all of a sudden, that profit margin can go negative. And when that happens, you'll see people. I promise you, in the next twelve months, who are are selling six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars in real estate, and will have to go get another job. Right. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna say. What's my revenue? What's my expectation of revenue? What are my expenses? What's my profit margin? And how do I protect that margin in a market that is changing? So you're going to do these four things. You're going to take a look at the market. You're going to take a look at your business. You're going to make edits. And then you're going to get, remember we talked at the beginning about our belief system, our, uh, one, of our, one of our main beliefs of creativity. We're going to talk about some creative ways that you can move forward, right? So measuring the market. So tell me if you feel like this is what's happening in the universe, right? Getting more inventory on the market. Yeah, that's happening. And month over month over month, uh, inventory is growing. We're seeing increased days on the market. Yep, yeah, that actually is, uh, is absolutely happening. Now, you might say, yeah, Mike, it's still very much a seller's market, right? But remember, Pendulum swing slowest at the edges. And then as they move through, they swing their fastest, right? So if they start increasing now, they will increase more and more and more. There are fewer pending. There are fewer uh, properties pending. Pendings are down for the last, uh, the last 60 days. There's a smaller board. That means realtors are getting out of the business. This hasn't started to happen yet, but it will happen. It just won't happen to anybody on this call or in this company, right? Because we're going to do the things that we have to do to stay in it. So if we stay in it, number of deals, fewer agents, we still have an opportunity to earn, 
uh, lower production and volume we've talked about, it's not going to be a volume shift, right? Which is actually going to keep more people in the game a little bit longer than, uh, than volume, uh, than normal because it's a unit shift, right? So there are fewer sides. There are going to be fewer sides. You're seeing solds down. Um, now I want to give you some perspective. Solds are, you know, month of June, one of the biggest months of the year, uh, every year down 7% from 2022 to 2021. But it's flat with 20, uh, 2019, right? So 2019 was uh, by no stretch of the imagination, a bad year, it was a seller's market, we had good appreciation. And if we uh, landed, if anyone had told you in 2019 that you were gonna have that year again, three years from now, you'd say, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, right? Same, uh, same amount of opportunity, uh, same amount of business uh, and, and all that, you, you'd be pretty happy about that. So don't let the news articles and the conversations of people about the market being down, let you make you think that there's not opportunity. It's just a different level of opportunity. And then of course there will be fewer leads. You know, um, everybody wanted to buy a home when interest rates were two and a half percent. There are still gonna be a ton of people wanting to buy homes if they're 10 and a half percent, I promise you. It's just that you have to work harder to find the motivator. So that these are the numbers that you need to be dialed in on. And we're going to and, and, you know, we're going to provide we provide them on a regular basis. If you're ever wondering, hey, what's going on with any of these numbers, please just ask me. I'm obsessive about this stuff uh, and we'll start providing some regular updates in those training and tens. You're going to get a, a, a Money Mike's Market update uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pretty excited about that. We're going to talk a little bit about the big, big, big picture uh, of the global economy and what's going on there and how it applies to us here in sleepy little Northeast Ohio. Next thing you're gonna do is get a better understanding of where your income's at. Guys, if you do not have a pipeline, if you are not tracking your pendings, if you don't know where your next 60 days of money is coming from, that is your first action item today. Pause for a minute and just truly get it off the whiteboard, get it onto paper, figure out how many closings you're going to have, how much money you're going to make off of them, and understand your income in the next 60 days. For the last two years, there has been a constant stream of people looking to buy or sell and capitalize on what is an otherwise uh, you know, rare, rare market, right? How many times have we heard somebody, oh, I've been in real estate for 25 years and never seen a market like this. Well, guess what? You're going to not ever hear that again because people will have seen a market like the one we're going into. And if we're not prepared for it, both mentally and financially, Eric talked about all the mindset last week. Now I'm talking about finances. He always gets the fun stuff. I get the boring stuff. Um, you need to understand this. And if you understand your pipeline and you understand what you have pending or can make pending, um, then you're going to understand where your revenue comes from. And guys, pro tip here, don't, don't fixate on closings, fixate on pending. What is pending or will be pending in the next 60 days? And then all you have to do is add 30 days onto that. And that's what will close, right? But you can control your pendings more than you can control your closings. So now do that. What's in pipeline for next two months? What's the income? And then what is uh, uh, what will your average monthly income be as a result of that, right? And you're going to fixate on that number because that's your revenue. As your expected revenue to get you through to October. This gets you through to the fourth quarter. And then you got to look at the size of your business, right? So taking a good, cold, hard look at the financials. Uh, once you understand where your money is going, uh, you, can, you can have an honest conversation. Most of the agents that I have this conversation with don't know because they don't want to know, Right. If you are running your life and your business off of what's in the checking account, you are massively exposed right now. And, and, I, and I don't say that to scare you. I say that to say, hey, come talk to me about that. Come talk to me about a budget. Come talk to me about uh, how to get clarity on your financial situation. Because if you're waiting for the uh, checking account to run out to realize that the market has shifted, the opportunities uh, to support you and, and see you through are going to be few and far between. That's why we're having this conversation now. So personal expenses, right? Once you understand your situation, you can understand if lifestyle adjustments are needed. If lifestyle adjustments are needed, 
Uh, and then I, I always encourage you put them in buckets, right? You know, where's, uh, you know, what are you spending on food is a good bucket, but break that down and say, what am I spending on food that I buy at the grocery store? What am I spending on food that I buy through an app or at a restaurant, right? Because it's really easy to say like, well, I got to eat. Yes, but you don't have to eat at Hyde Park, right? So these are things to consider as you are looking at your financial situation. I'm not telling you to, to behave like a popper. I am telling you to be aware of these things, right? Here's a stat that I'm going to share tomorrow morning. We're going to talk about the average recession of the last six recessions is somewhere around 14 months, right? If you count the double dip in the 80s, it gets closer to 16. The longest is 18. So when the average is so close to the max, that means that there's a pretty tight pattern around how long recessions last. And so what you want to be doing is thinking about if there's an economic recession, if it has an impact on the real estate industry, if it has an, op if it has an impact on the way that my income flows in, if you can protect yourself and manage through it for 18 months while the rest of the, the world bails on it, you're going to be one of those last people standing, right? The, the, the number of realtors throughout the United States went from 1.5 million uh, to about 450,000 in uh, the great financial crisis, right? I'm not suggesting that's what's going to happen, right? We're not expecting to see that, but we will, we will lose, uh, we will lose uh, agents from the industry. And the reason is right here, right? We've upgraded our lifestyles to match our income after two of the best years in the history of real estate. And we're going to have one of a top 10 year in the history of real estate, but it won't be enough for most people. All right. And so you can control that by controlling not what you make. Well, first what you make and then what you don't spend. So, and then for your business, follow a budget guys. I wish, I wish I didn't have to do this, but the budget's in here, right? PL statement, chart of accounts, how much money to spend on what things exists inside of here. Uh, uh, the millionaire real estate agent in the budget model. That's the third model for a millionaire real estate agent. Get your head wrapped around that and start thinking about it. There's also 25 uh, principles for uh, financial success. Uh, and number one is lead with revenue. So number one, we're going to be thinking about uh, selling houses, uh, not how we can spend money. But once you have money, you got to know where to spend it. Uh, if your income is uh, lower than your expenses, then uh, or if your margin is tight, right? So if you are losing money or not making enough, cut your expenses and step up your lead gen. You heard about this. If you were in the summer mastermind panel with Doxy and Debbie and Pete, all of them said this, that when the market starts to shift, if you lean in and start talking to people, what do we do as real estate agents? We help people. And when these things happen, we have more opportunities to help people in a big, big way in a time where they need it. And that's how we earn clients for life. So over the next 24 months, right, and 18 months of recession, other people are going to have challenges. And if we're stepping up our lead gen, we're finding opportunities to ask for the referral. Who needs help? How can I help you with real estate? What's going on with your home? What are the things that you're facing? How, you know, family occupation, recreation, dreams are all going to lead to conversations around real estate. We're going to be in the game. Now, cutting the fat, um, you know, imagine it's, uh, it's January 1st and we're, uh, we're starting to work on our beach bods. That's what we're going to do with our, uh, our cash, right? So the number one thing you want to think of is not, oh, I, uh, I've always done this and it worked. It's, uh, or like, I can't imagine not, uh, you know, not driving a Lexus, right? Whatever it is. You have to ask yourself, how does this expense help me produce, uh, and I'll even say, or serve a buyer or seller? So how does this help me get more leads, or how does this help me make the most of those opportunities, right? And most people, again, because this is a, something that I will consult with a lot of agents on, they'll say, I don't know, right? And well, well uh, you know, ignorance is not an excuse. I think uh, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Brixner, my fifth, fifth grade teacher, told me that one. Um, and so if you don't know, go, go learn, right? And it's, it's your money. It's your business. You should be able to know whatever you want, whenever you want to know it. And if you don't, I'll help you. And if you say it doesn't, cut it, cut it.
right? So we have to expect a four to one return on everything that we're investing and for everything that we are uh, uh, putting into our business, right? And if we cannot pinpoint that, uh, or if it doesn't deliver that, cut it. If we don't know, go figure it out. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm passionate about zero-based budgeting. If you don't know where your money's going, figure that out. But if, if you're like, well, I don't have a budget, or if you haven't been paying attention to how you spend money, start zero base. Use the millionaire real estate uh, agent, PL, chart of accounts, and start thinking about where you want to invest money, right? Uh, not where you always have. So zero base means you start with a blank sheet of paper and you figure out what do you need to run your business and then you don't spend anything else. Zero base budgets are always always more uh, uh, frugal and more impactful to your margin rate than a year over year budget or a historically based budget. So here's, here's the two things that you can do that you need to do today. Think of two things that you can cut. Think of things that aren't giving a return. Think if they're auto drafts on your credit cards. Think if they are in some way, shape or form not delivering what they need to, right? You know of a couple things that you have. I don't, I don't care if it's just that you haven't turned on Disney Plus in six months, right? Because you really wanted to watch Hamilton and, now you, and then you watched it and you forgot to unsubscribe. That's fine if that's what it is. $7 a month adds up. And if you don't think it does, stop drinking Starbucks for a month and see how much more money you have. The second thing, and I guarantee you the bigger thing for most of the people on the call today is there's, you have to commit to at least two or three areas that you are going to better understand, right? You need to be able to measure your business. If you, if, if you say, I don't know to the impact of something, like, hey, how's that, uh, you know, how's paying for that website working out for you? Or how's, uh, you know, how's, uh, you know, that, uh, that investment that you made in, uh, in those leads? If you don't know, figure it out. And that's all the commitment that you need to do now, because then, as soon as you know, it is going to be so stark and clear whether you need to invest more or you just need to drop it all together, right? But ignorance is not an excuse when it comes to your money. So uh, lead generation, this uh, quick, quick comment on lead generation. Guys, we have to have to step up the game here. Network, get out, meet people meet people. I guarantee you about 98% of the people that you're going to run into are going to sleep with a roof over their head. Uh, so most of the people you meet have a real estate need. Lead generate, get it back on the calendar every day. Fizbo's and expireds, while they haven't been a thing for the last 24 months, they will be a thing again. They will be a thing again. Uh, and, uh, and if you're on it right now, you're going to build good habits. And you'll be there. Get back to open houses, right? 6% uh, of everybody who bought a home last year, six out of every hundred homes sold was sold by someone who met their client at an open house, right? So take all the, uh, take all the deals you did, divide by, uh, one, uh, multiply by 0.10, uh, 1.06. That's uh, how many deals you could do if you just held open houses. Get involved in the community, right? Economic recessions always create opportunities for community engagement. We just heard a great example of that, of what Monica's doing. And then if you're a mega agent and you've leveraged out lead generation, communication, uh, or opportunities to directly engage with clients, get back in the mix. Uh, from a marketing standpoint, so remember prospecting is activity-based, marketing is money-based, and it's bigger and broader. Um, market with, for a direct response. Go back to the May sales meetings and look at every sales meeting that talked about a MOFR, make offer for immediate response. Drive customers to speak to you, right? You want to drive people into action. You're no longer looking for brand awareness in a shift, right? You do not need brand awareness. You need conversations and contacts. And then if you have a website with a information wall, if you have Anything that lets you know that somebody saw, if somebody liked your post on Facebook about selling a house, give them a call, shoot them a text, hit them with a message. You want to take the marketing piece and deliver a personal contact as a result. So real quick, sometimes when people bust out the chainsaw, they destroy the forest, right? Because they don't know how to use it or they're just having too much fun. So when you start cutting expenses, two things you cannot cut. 
You cannot cut, right? This is cutting off your nose despite your face is don't cut customer service, right? Because in the market share that you take in a shift, the business that you earn in a shift will be business for life if you do it right, right? That's the reason why all of the biggest businesses in Northeast Ohio made their huge leap forward and got into a dominant position in the shifts, right? So don't dial back customer service. Don't dial back that anything that gets you a five-star review or a referral and do not cut coaching and training right? This investment does make you money. If it doesn't, talk to somebody who's had it and then didn't have it. And the difference in their business will be stark. Because once, once you understand what it does for you, especially in the shifting market, the challenges of today, tomorrow, and the next day will not be yesterday, the day before, and the day before that. So you need somebody to help pull those answers out of you and hold you accountable to the life that you want to live. Now, making the most of what you have, real straightforward here. This is the time to roll up the sleeves, right? Put a little sweat equity in and, uh, and do the human work. So transaction sides are going down, right? They will, they will go down. They're not going to plummet, but there will be less. So we have to make the most of the transactions that we have in yielding more transactions. So ask for the referral on the buy side. Every single time something good happens and there's a reason to celebrate and they are at peak joy, let them know. Hey, you know, is there anybody else you know that's, that's in the same process? Have you talked to anybody? Is anybody else excited about this and considering it for themselves? You know, I would love that. Make the most of your, uh, make the most of your yard signs. If you get a listing, right? People's excuse for not holding open houses was, oh, the house sells so fast, it sells without it. Bull. Open, open houses are always a good idea, right? Because most of the people that walk through the open house are sellers. Right? They're nosy neighbors and they want to know, well, what's Betty getting for her house? And what's that mean about what we can get for our house? Right. So make the most of your yard signs with no open left behind, no open left behind. And then work with preferred partners because those transactions are so hypercritical. And we're going to, you know, you're going to hear our broker, Andrew Ginter, at the end of this series, talk about bulletproofing a transaction. Part of that is making sure that you know who you're working with and you trust them. So, you know, get in and get relationships with Sean, Don, and Chris from Cross Country. Get in relationship and get deals flowing to GM titles so that they know you, know the way you like to work, and can protect your deals from end to end, right? Make sure that you have um, your things nailed down uh, to make the most out of every transaction. And guys, none of this costs you anything, Right. This is a huge, huge leverage. Your, your rate of return on these activities is massive, right? So bringing this home, the bottom line is, uh, is that it's up to you. It's your money. It's your business. I, I will help anybody. And then this is an open offer. Call, text, email, set up a time with me. I want to look at your financials. I want to help you understand the economics of your business. But you know your opportunity here to understand and, and adapt uh, is, is going to make the difference um, for the size of your world and the size of your life. So first, know your numbers. Get on the MLS, get on trend graphics, understand the market. If you don't understand the market, ask me and I'll help you understand it. Know your business, right? You can pull KW reports, you can pull your MLS reports, you can pull what goes in and out of your bank account, but you've got to understand the way the cash is flowing. Next, commit to the cut. The two things you were going to do is identify something you can get rid of today. You can get rid of today. And the second thing you were going to do is identify three things that you actually need to understand if they're having an impact. And if so, what impact on your business? The fourth thing is maximize every opportunity. Every transaction should beget at least two leads. At least two leads. And if it's a listing, you should be looking for five leads through open houses, sign calls, or referrals. Right? So every deal should beget more deals. And then finally, you have to do it. You have to do it. This, and again, this is practical and tactical. This is not theoretical. This is not philosophical, guys. This is your business. This is your cash. This is your profit. And this is your shift if you want it to be, right? This is your opportunity to uh, take the bull by the horns, take some market share, and then in five years from now, 
uh, you know, be the person that is, uh, you know, on a panel talking about navigating the shift. I think the, uh, I think the opportunity for us, uh, for us right now, where you are and who you're in business with, uh, there is nobody in all of Northeast Ohio, probably nobody in the world that's more ready to take this by the horns. If you need help, raise your hand and ask for it, guys. I am very, very passionate about what we're doing here and about the financial side. Uh, upcoming uh, shift courses, uh, you're going to see stuff around lead conversion, lead capture, creating urgency, bulletproof transactions. Every Tuesday for the third quarter, we are hitting a shift tactic. So get strapped on, uh, get strapped in. And, uh, and when we get to the fourth quarter and this shift is live, you're going to have every tool you need to be successful. That's all I got. I ain't got no more. Thanks for sticking with me uh, for a few extra minutes, guys. Next week, Rocky River, Ukraine, uh, uh, supply drive. Look forward to seeing you all there. More information coming into your inboxes soon. I'll see you here next week, if not sooner. Have a wonderful day.